So today, we're going to look at two required practicals to measure the speeds of waves. One is using a ripple tank, and the second is using the waves on strings. For both of these experiments, we need to use the equation wave speed is frequency times wavelength. The key is we need to measure the wavelength. We need to measure the frequency. Once we've measured both of those, we can then calculate the speed. So our first experiment is the ripple tank. We've got a motor here, which makes this beam, this wooden beam, vibrate up and down, producing these waves. These are the crests of the waves you can see in the picture. We've got a lamp, which produces an image of the crests on a piece of paper below, and we've got a ruler to measure. So those are the crests of the waves, and in between the crests, the distance between two crests is a wavelength. Now what you need to do is to take a photograph of that, because those waves will be moving. Once you've got your photograph with your ruler, you can measure across as many wavelengths as you can. The best one in the exam is to say measure across 10. It's an easy number to remember. So there's one I've done earlier. Uh, that's the ruler. And we're going to measure across 10 wavelengths. And I work that out to be 33.3 centimetres. So dividing by 10 gives a wavelength of 3.3 centimetres. So we've got the wavelength, how are we going to measure the frequency? Well, the key thing is, frequency is the number of waves every second. Now you're not going to be able to count the waves in a second, you've got to count the waves in a longer time. So I suggest again, 10 seconds, it's easy to remember. Watch this video, count how many waves pass this point in 10 seconds, it will stop at 10 seconds. I made that 17 waves in 10 seconds, divided by 10 gives 1.7 waves per second past that point, which is the frequency. And then finally, we just use the equation, wave speed is frequency times wavelength. The frequency was 1.7, wavelength was 3.33 centimetres, which will give a speed in centimetres per second of 5.6. In your exam, you need to be able to write this method out. So this is a question which asks you to do that. I'll read it with you and then pause the video. Figure three shows the equipment a teacher used to determine the speed of a water wave. The experiment includes a ripple tank filled with water, a wooden bar that creates ripples on the surface of the water, a light source which causes a shadow of the ripples on the screen. Describe how experiment in figure three can be used to measure the wavelength, frequency, and speed of the water wave. Six marks. You notice they've broken it up. They've not asked you to explain, it's just described, so it's bullet points of the method. Pause the video, have a go. Firstly, in some exam answers, and um, they've asked in the past for you to say to slow the motor down, because if the frequency is too high, you won't be able to count the waves and the wavelengths will be too small. Secondly, I always draw a ruler there so the examiner knows that you understand to put a ruler next to the patterns here. Take a photo with a ruler next to the wave image, measure across 10 wavelengths and divide by 10 to find the wavelength. Next, it's the frequency. Count how many waves pass the point in seconds and divide by 10 to find the frequency. Notice if we keep both of these as 10, you'll remember them. Finally, calculate the speed of the wave using speed equals frequency times wavelength. I've quoted the equation, six marks. We've covered the ripple tank. The next one is how do we measure the speed of waves on a string? Now this experiment actually comes down from A level and you don't have to understand how it works. You just have to be able to measure the wavelength and frequency and calculate speed. So what we have is we have a vibrator generator that's going to send waves down here to this wooden bridge and they'll be reflected back. And they set up what's called a standing wave. So you're actually going to measure the speed of the waves traveling up and down to set this up. Now, it creates a loop at certain frequencies and the distance of one loop, that's one loop there, 
is half a wavelength because that is a whole wavelength. So if you now watch this short video to see how you can use this method to measure the speed of waves on a stream. We've got the signal generator, we've got an oscillator here which vibrates up and down and we've got a pulley at the end and we've got some weights under there to add tension to this string to make it taut. And what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a standing wave on this and then you're going to be able to calculate how fast the waves are moving up and down to create this standing wave. So the first thing to do is to turn on the signal generator. That's going to produce an alternating current which causes this to vibrate. And if you watch carefully, I'm going to increase this until we get our first loop. So that is our first loop. Now that loop is 80 centimetres, so that's 80 centimetres the length of the string, and this loop is half a wavelength. So from that we can work out the speed of the wave, because the frequency is 33 hertz. So we have one single loop, and that has got a length of 0.8 metres, and that's half a wavelength. And we've also got a frequency of 33 hertz. So we've got a wavelength which is equal to twice the length of the loop because the loop was only half a wavelength. That's 1.6 meters. Speed is frequency times wavelength. The frequency was 33 and the wavelength was 1.6. So that gives us 52.8 meters per second. Now what we can now do is we can go up to the next set of loops and work out the speed again. So this is the next set of loops and actually we've doubled the frequency to 66 hertz and you'll notice that we've now got a whole wavelength on that length of string. So we've actually halved the wavelength by doubling the frequency. It's still 80 centimetres long, but with a frequency of 66 hertz, we've got a wavelength of 80 centimetres. So this time we've got two loops, which is a whole wavelength, because we've doubled the frequency to 66 hertz, but we've still got the length of 0.8 metres. Because we've got two loops, the wavelength is the length of the string, 0.8 meters. So speed is frequency times wavelength. The frequency was 66 hertz. The wavelength was 0.8 meters, and that gives us 52.8 meters per second, the same speed as before. So what we can do, we can finally check our speed again by going up to three loops, which should be three times 33, which is 99 hertz. And we're there. And you can see we've now got three loops, and that is actually one and a half wavelengths. So from this, we can work out the speed again, and we should get the same answer. So now we've got three loops. Remember, each loop is half a wavelength, so we've actually got one and a half wavelengths. The frequency we had to make three times, so that's 99 hertz, and the length is still 0.8 meters. So the length of one loop is going to be the length of the string, 0.8, divided by three, which is 0.267 meters. That allows us to work out one wavelength is gonna be the length of two loops, so that's two times that, which is 0.533 meters. Finally, speed is frequency, times wavelength, we've used that every time so far. So we've got 99 hertz times by the 0.533 is equal to 5.28 meters, the same as we had before. Finally, a quicker way to work out wavelength, you'll notice that it's two thirds of the total length. So it gives us 0.533 meters, the same as doing it the longer way. With one loop, 
we had half a wavelength and we got 52.8 meters per second. With two loops, which is a whole wavelength, we still got the same speed because we doubled the frequency. And finally, we tripled the frequency and we've got one and a half wavelengths, three loops, and of course, whichever one we do, we get the same speed. So in your exam, they might draw one loop, they might draw two loops, or they might even draw three loops. So let's now apply this to a question. Figure four shows the apparatus used to investigate the waves in a stretched string. You'll notice you've got 80 centimeters there, and notice that's half a wavelength, and that's another half wavelength. The frequency of the signal generated is adjusted so that the wave is shown in figure four. At this frequency, the string vibrates between the two positions shown in figure four. And you'll notice the frequency is 55 hertz. You'll also notice, if you look this carefully, that that says a movable bridge. Do look at those words carefully. Why do you think they've said movable? You'll find out later in the question. So, the first part of it says the string in figure four vibrates at 55 hertz. Calculate the speed of the wave shown in figure four. Use data given in figure four. Pause the video, have a go. So, of course, speed is frequency times wavelength. Quote that equation first. The frequency is 55, and be careful because the speed is in meters per second. So the wavelength, that is a whole wavelength, uh, is 0.8 metres, so it gives you 44 metres a second. If you used your centimetres, you'd have got two out of three marks. Now the next part of the question said, the frequency of the signal generator is increased. This makes the wavelength of the wave change. The wave speed stays the same. Describe how the apparatus could be adjusted to show one complete wave without reducing the frequency. I will give you a clue. First of all, it says describe, so that's what you would do. Using the apparatus, so look at the apparatus. And a hint, if you increase the frequency, the wavelength decreases. Have a go. So you need to move the bridge towards this end. So move the bridge to the right because the wavelength is smaller. Um, I've shown you a little video here so you can actually see it in practice. As you can see, increasing the frequency makes the wavelength smaller so that string is too long for one wavelength. If we reduce the length of the string, it eventually fits the size of the wavelength and we get those two loops again. The next part was an investigation. The student wants to investigate how the speed of the wave on the stretched string depends on the tension on the string. The student uses the apparatus in figure four. Describe a method the student could use to investigate this. So it's worth four marks, so you need to include four points. Now, describe means just bullet point what you would do. You've got to talk about the apparatus here. And because it's an investigation, you first need to think, what are you changing and what are you measuring? So it wants you to investigate how the speed of the wave changes with tension. So first of all, you've got to change the tension in the string. And secondly, from changing the tension, got to think about how you would find the speed using that. Pause the video, have a go, and I'll go for it. So firstly, you've got to change the tension. So add a weight on the end there, or mass on the end there, will change the tension. Once that happens, you are not going to get a waveform here anymore, so you're going to have to adjust the frequency until you get that wave again. So the next thing is adjust the frequency until you get two loops and record this frequency. Next, of course, you need the wavelength. So you measure the wavelength, uh, which would still be 80 centimetres. 
Finally, you calculate the speed, frequency, times wavelength. Now that was investigated with just one tension. So you might be asked uh, to repeat for more tensions using more masses. And so you can do multiple sets of data. Just so you can actually see how this works, I've done another quick video for you. So this little video will just prove that experiment which you've designed. So adding another mass onto the end of the pulley, you can see that waveform collapses. It's no longer a whole wavelength. But if I increase the frequency until I've got two loops again, that is our one wavelength. And I can now measure the frequency of that and work out the speed. I can then add another weight and you can see the waveform collapses again. Increasing the frequency again will allow me to get that single wavelength back and from that work out the speed. So we've looked at two required practicals to measure the speed of waves. First of all using a ripple tank and secondly the wave on a string. In both cases we've used this equation where we've had to describe how to measure the wavelength. We've had to describe how to measure the frequency and we've explained how to calculate the speed. Just a little extra, um, I've done a quick video um, which looks at using a strobe so you can actually see the waveforms changing. So what I've done is a little extra video for you. I'm using a strobe which strobes at the same frequency so you can see the wave in one position and you can clearly see that you've got one waveform there and one wavelength. In this one, I'm just strobing slightly off the frequency and you can now see that waveform moving up and down. And you can now see where those loops come from. Next lesson, we're going to look at how waves refract and that's lesson four. I'll leave you with the specification points that we've covered today.